Hello, I'm Hannah Kaplan, and this is the WCS Wild Audio Podcast, where you'll find reported audio stories covering the latest news and newsmakers from WCS's field sites, zoos and aquarium, and their conservation partners. We've got a great show today, so let's get to it. You may have heard about the large scale of the current species extinction crisis. It's unprecedented and dangerous, according to experts. For Endangered Species Day on May 19th, Dan Rosen of WCS Wild Audio explores why it matters and what we can all do to stop it. Over a million species are now threatened with extinction. In 2019, an independent group of experts called IPBES put out a major report on the state of nature, and this takeaway got a lot of attention. But it can be easy to gloss over the numbers. Why does that matter? If all these animals disappear, what effect will that have on the planet and us? This is Liz Bennett, WCS's Vice President for Species Conservation. There's always an ethical value for saving these species. I mean, they are magnificent. A lot of these species that are highly threatened, they're just absolutely magnificent part of the fabric of the planet. There's a broader reason we should care too, she says. Forests without elephants or oceans without whales won't be nearly as effective at making Earth more resilient. Every species contributes to that really solid web of life that basically protects all of us. It helps to generate the oxygen that we breathe. It mitigates the climate that we live in. And so we all need these intricate webs of intact systems. There are two major causes of the current decline, both caused by us humans. One is the loss and fragmentation of habitat. 60% of the world's terrestrial surface is now highly modified by humans. Only about 20% is considered fairly intact. And that varies somewhat by, by uh, types of habitat. So it's uh, uh, places like deserts are more intact, whereas somewhere like tropical forests, where you know, almost two thirds of the world's terrestrial species are in tropical forests, and less than 20% of that remains intact. Overexploitation is the other big cause of extinction, whether it's for food, for medicine, for pets, or for ornamentation like with ivory. Then another one that really does impact some species pretty heavily uh, is, is uh, disease issues, such as avian influenza and African swine fever, which are really causing problems for some species around the world today. Among its strategies, WCS is addressing the threats by working with local governments, indigenous peoples, and local communities to protect intact landscapes and ensure these habitats have the full complement of species they require. We also need to supplement that with things to address the illegal and unsustainable trade in species as well through uh, working out further along the trade chain to try and break the trade chain, reduce demand for some of these things, and work with policies and laws to make that more effective as well. There are things you can do to help too, Liz says. One is to act locally by getting involved with the local naturalist group where you live. And another thing that we can all do is really be careful in our buying choices. So partly don't buy endangered species, so don't buy ivory, don't buy pets which come from species which could be threatened in the wild. But also we can be more conscious about buying, only buying timber from sustainable sources and uh, trying to um, perhaps reduce our, our beef consumption because, because loss of habitat to cattle is a major loss of, of habitat in many parts of the world. So we can all be just think a little bit more about our buying choices as much as we have the uh, luxury of doing so. Right now, there are reasons to be hopeful. We've learned a lot in the last couple decades about how to save species. We know how to do it. It's a question of having the political will, the local buy-in, and the resources to get it done. In many places, Liz says, we're already seeing momentum begin to turn with the help of local communities. For the first time last year, the number of tigers is starting to go up. It's partly because we're counting them in more places, so we're getting better at counting them, but the, the dramatic decline to make them the world's most endangered big cat seems to be stopping and turning around. It's patchy. Uh, in some places, they're still going down, but in other places, and overall as a species, they're starting to go up, which really gives me hope. If the global community can turn around a species like a tiger, a big predator that lives in highly populated places in the world, that's hugely hopeful. For WCS Wild Audio, I'm Dan Rosen.
This special episode of WCS Wild Audio was produced and reported by Dan Rosen with help from Hannah Kaplan and Nat Moss. We'll be back soon with our third season. In the meantime, catch up on all the episodes you may have missed from the first two seasons at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.